Yep. Okay. Uh, actually, no, it says I have to ask the host. I'm sorry, you what? It says I have to ask the host. Okay, try now. All right. Yep, it's good. Perfect. So we're going to just begin at random. I'm going to just, you know, randomly call an order. So we'll start, Tony, since you're on already, we'll go you, Paulette, you'll go next, Steve, you'll go next, um, and then Rick. And so we're going to do one question each. And then if we have time, we're going to rotate again. Mm -hmm. um, so only if you're speaking, please have your video on. Otherwise, please take your camera off, mute. Um, and we can get going. So let's begin. We got about 15 minutes, a little less than that. So let's start. Okay. Guys, talk to me about that castle. That was friggin' amazing. Yeah, it was spectacular, wasn't it? Oh my God. I think we might be like 37th vampire show that's shot in that castle, but uh, for good reason. <laughs> so what was it like as actors to be playing on that stage? Um, very lucky. I mean, there's not much acting needed to be done when you're in such an amazing castle. I mean, the stage is already set. It's pretty, it was very incredible to just step in there. Everything came to you. Yeah, it was, it was my first experience of, I mean, I've been on amazing sets that have been built and, or in modern buildings, but to be playing, you know, 18th century Transylvania and not have to imagine, you know, not walk through a stage door and, and have your air conditioning tube going and everything <laughs> like that to actually just be there and not even in the castle themselves, but the grounds around um, just instantaneous, instant, can't say the word, instantaneously puts you into a mindset that um, I think it allows, at least I'm speaking for myself, it allows you to play a little bit more in the moment because that part of your brain is not also trying to imagine your surroundings and imagine what it's going to look like once CGI is all finished with, you know, adding on stuff as well to the, to the set. Cool, thank you guys. Okay, Paulette, nope. you're up. Okay, there we go. I have to stand up because my my computer's um, my camera's so high. There we go. Um, I'm just curious. Um, when we get to the end, because this is the beginning of the end, right? Um, are fans going to be happy with the ending? Do you know if um, is this the original? Are we going to have the original vision for the finale that uh, that was Neil's vision, or or did things change along the way? I think that it was a you know shows like to uh, sort of pretend that they've masterminded something from the, the get go and they've never altered course on the way there. But I think it was always an evolving thing. I think what's, what what should make fans happy is it, we were lucky enough to know it was the fifth and final season, so it gave the writers the opportunity to actually bring it to a satisfying conclusion. And I mean, like, is it open ended enough that there could be a, a movie? <laughs> I think everybody kind of wants to like leave. I think there's enough Easter eggs in there that they could, they could pull that off if they wanted to. But at the same time, bring the story to, like I said, like yeah, a, a satisfying conclusion, so you can walk away going, right, okay, that was there was the beginning, a middle, and an end to that story, which I love. You know, I th I think the shows that are lucky enough to have that opportunity um, are better for it. I, I wasn't around. Uh, can't speak for Nicole. <laughs> she wasn't either, but. Um, I actually never met Neil and what, by the time I came into it, so I don't, you know, Jonathan is certainly the one to answer that question in terms of from what was in the beginning into the end. But I do know that the fifth season, like Jonathan said, having the liberty of knowing it's the final season, um, you can place things into, and, and the, the show is its own entity, its own version of the Dracula story anyway, and the Van Helsing story anyway. So to be able to finalize it in a way that the team wanted um, and be able to bring back all the mythology that was layered in in the first four seasons of the show um, without feeling like you're giving away too much because you know you are coming to an end. 
So I think it's mm-hmm. the most important thing is knowing it's the final season. I know every actor and team hates when, when you, the, pu- the plug gets pulled and you're like, but we didn't finish the story. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think this season um, will be satisfying for even new fans or viewers that are coming in right for like episode one, season five. They'll be able to follow a whole storyline and, and end it properly. But I think it'll be even more satisfying for those who have been around since season one, episode one, because we really hit, like you said, Trisha, on a lot of the points from the earlier seasons and wrap everything up very nicely. Terrific. Thank you, guys. Cheers. All right, Steve, you're up. All right. My question has to do with aspects of your character. And have you pulled any aspects of previous characters into this character that you're playing now? Actors? (laughs) (laughs) It's not you two. Uh, I, well, okay, I'll go. The, uh, yeah. um, I, I, I mean, the short answer to that would be no. I think there's there's aspects of uh, the personal life that we were able to be brought to this character. That was the fun part of the character for me was I hadn't really gotten to play anything quite like him before. I hadn't played anyone in the military. I hadn't played that sort of archetype before. So, um, you know, but there were, there were things that had happened in, in my life, you know, even going off and sailing around an ocean and doing a bunch of stuff like that, that were sort of some survivalist in nature um, that was fun to try to bring to the character, you know, which is it, it was one of the huge um, boons for me. I, th- I think with any role is sort of an, an amalgamation, right? Of so many aspects of your own personal life, your studies, what you're bringing into it, your research. Uh, with Dracula, I was kind of overwhelmed in the beginning and I purposely didn't want to go back and because it's such an iconic character. Um, and so many amazing people have played it that I didn't want to kind of get stuck in the, oh, well, this is what Gary Oldman did, so maybe I should do this. And, um, and it's also a female Dracula, and it's a, a, our own complete version of it. So I really didn't. Um, and TV moves fast. By the time you get the offer, you're like, you're pretty quickly going up there and filming. So it's not like I could sit there and watch everything. But um, Between seasons four and five, I did read a really interesting book on um, Dracula's throughout cinematic history, which was really interesting for me to read it um, from some of the first incarnations and and how it was more creature-like and and, um, and, and just all the different versions, which I found really interesting more so than watching something. Um, But I think for me, playing her was just sort of fun. I don't think I drew from necessarily, it was like a big therapy session. I got a lot out. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a lot to release a lot of anger. Um, but uh, no, I think it was, um, this character for me was a lot of play, a lot of imagination more so than drawing from personal experience aside from the fact that I like biting people on a regular. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think for (laughs) I think for Jack, um, uh, it was more so uh, pulling out parts of me that I knew were inside, like some some more confidence or some inner strength that you know typically in my day to day I wasn't always there with it. But after you know playing Jack in season four especially really kind of helped me pull that out. And I've noticed much growth in myself and I have, I really do have Jack to thank for that. Um, And I kind of find that her character, my character pulled more so personality traits from the other characters around her. And I think you'll notice like there's some Violet in Jack and there's some Ivory in Jack and there's definitely some Axel in Jack because you know, (laughs) you'll, I think you'll see that a little more next season. But I think that's more what happens with Jack's personality than it being from me personally. And how are you doing with a more leading role, Nicole? Uh, You know, I loved you on Defiance, but it wasn't a real major role. And this one is becoming a major role. So do you feel any additional pressure? Um, I think with the support of, I mean, it's an ensemble cast, really. 
yes, this is definitely a bigger role than Defiance, but I was did Defiance when I was 18 and, and I'm 26 now. And since then, um, I've had just a lot of growth in my, in, in my career and myself. And I think everything kind of led to itself and allowed me to prepare for what is season five. So I felt very uh, prepared and supported by, by the cast and the crew. And, and I think we, I think we pulled it off pretty well. <laughs> Yeah, Nicole had a lot of heavy lifting to do this season for sure. And I think he, she absolutely rose the occasion in a big, big way. So that was awesome. Yes. We really appreciate everything you guys are doing. Love the show, have been there since day one and really appreciate and looking forward to this season. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. All right, Rick, you're up. Uh, Trisha, I want to follow up with you a little bit. To prepare for this, I rewatched the season four finale and then watched the season five beginner. And I was struck by how, how different the character was in both of those episodes. Could you just talk about the range this character allows you to play? Yeah, you know, it, with in season four finale, Dracula has, you know, she's she's returned and she's trying to take over what is left of humanity, trying to enslave what is left of humanity. Um, I didn't know much past that, right? I mean, we hadn't, didn't have this season five ep episodes yet or anything. I can't really give away too much with the difference in uh, the character in the beginning because I've been sort of sworn to secrecy by our showrunner. Um, but uh, it, you will really see, we are going to see, it's an, it's an origin story, 18th century Transylvania, the first three episodes. And it is the origin story of Dracula, which I think, I mean, selfishly, because it's my own character, but also I think for the show, uh, if you know you're doing a final season and it's a show about Van, the Van Helsing vampire hunters, um, at, at some point, ultimately Dracula, the darkness is going to come in. It's a show between light and dark, right? Um, so for me, it was very interesting. And I, I hope the fans will find um, it is, you know, as, as kind of enthralling as I did playing it. Um, such a treat to be able to do that, that time period, but also really kind of, it really makes Dracula and our version of the show and our version of Dracula unique. I think that's about all I can say that a lot happens in the first three episodes to uh, explain uh, the question, you know, basically your question, the difference between them. Um, but I can't really get into that too much without giving away some spoilers. I'm yeah, I mean, I thought the writers did an amazing job with that, you know, taking the license to completely reinvent the Dracula Orange written story to, to suit the show. And, you know, in doing that, you get to see Dracula as Dracula and Dracula before they uh, they were Dracula, and you know that required a huge amount of range from Trisha, which was you know she did spectacularly. So, yeah, that was, uh, there's a there's a big gap in the before and after, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I got lucky. Yeah. I will say I got lucky because my introduction to Dracula was with Jonathan directing season episode seven in season four, and then also the Transylvania episodes was Jonathan just doing this massive directing of the like this basically a mini series we <laughs> shot it all as one you know um and we've worked together before and I just have such trust and faith in Jonathan his vision and we also just had sort of a shorthand that it was it really helped me as an actor coming in playing the origin story and and the differences in that to just all I'd have to do is look at Jonathan sometimes and he'd be like N -n 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 -th this way and <laughs> like okay got it <laughs> thanks man appreciate it Cheers. Thank, you. thank you guys all right um that is all the time we have for this group so press thank you so much I really really appreciate you guys joining um and supporting the show great thank you great directing great acting too Really good, a lot of yeah. fun. Thank you. How much, Tony? You're gone. Perfect, all right. So Jeanette will slowly be, oh, and uh, 
press, you guys can go ahead and just leave room. Great job, you guys. 